You're listening to JW Raw with Eminem. Live, live. Welcome to the show, Matt Page. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming, sir. It's my pleasure. This is your first time I, uh, to our brand new, uh, well, not brand new anymore, but to our mega facility. Yeah, new to me. I've, I've driven past it and seen pictures, and I follow some of the fighters on, on Instagram and their other social media stuff, so I see them posting videos. It's the first time I've gotten a walk in it's amazing so you, you're you're obviously a martial arts fan uh, mm -hmm. were you did you go to the old gym up on san mateo i uh again i've been uh outside of it yeah <laughs> but so i you, had never you work seen... with our guys they, they go to your place yeah we kind of thing, yeah and it's sort of the nature of what we do like we have over the years st sort of uh retrofitted the dojo abq karate which joe conway who plays todd woodland master ken's assistant he plays uh, uh he he owns the actual dojo ah, okay so it's a working dojo yeah it's an american kempo dojo and he teaches a variety of things there stick fighting and and some uh some uh he has uh jujitsu there he has a, bu a bunch of bunch of things self-defense seminars and everything and kids classes and so it's a functioning dojo but in order to um, make it easier to film we have lighting installed up in the rafters yeah, on yeah. these big we like go in and we lower the wow we lower the lights at night and plug them in and, and we have this little studio <laughs> set up bags out of the way it really is like that it really out. is like that we it's actually transform it, it takes about 10 minutes it wow. takes about 10 minutes and we like lower we literally lower these lights out of the rafters plug them in we uh, uh turn a couple of things around and it just transforms into master ken's dojo for yeah. the evening and and uh, and this is why we have to film at night because the, the it's a working dojo during the day, so we have to film after hours so that we don't uh, of course, conflict. Interfere. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to our world, exactly. And <laughs> we were kind of having that conversation with Michelle Waterson downstairs before right. we came up here. That right. She's she's actually building a gym at her new house, and which uh, I told her I am following. I'm I'm exactly. seeing the construction yeah, on and, her and Instagram. Yeah, we all love watching that. Uh, we love watching <laughs> watching her progress with the with the garage. It's right, like, man, that thing is turning huge. And yeah, it's really cool, but. The main reason that she's doing is because she has sponsors. Obviously, yeah. um, being being a, a fighter, she she needs to have privacy of of her own little space. And she's tried to do it here before, but the problem with here, it's not a controlled environment. Just like a movie shoot, you know, right. you need a controlled environment. You need the lights, the, right. the, the, the quiet. So we've always got something going on here. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. we're the biggest, one of the biggest gyms in the world. So of course. we've always got people coming in. We've got people living here. We got 40, 50 people living upstairs. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to control that. So her main goal uh, in building that place is, is it gives her that private spot to, she can control the environment. So we were talking about that. And it's the same as like what you were just saying with your place. At nighttime, like you finally get the place to yourself. Yeah, it's and, quiet. Yeah, we turn off all the fluorescents and unplug the vending machines and like make it really, really quiet. And then we turn on our studio <laughs> yeah. lighting, and then we just you know make our show as best we can uh, and uh, um, film late, late into the night, uh, just chipping away at keeping take, take ten. Yeah, oh god, some of them are <laughs> like that. We've actually gotten much better about. Um, uh, Rehear like we actually just did a video picking on the uh, 10th planet guys and nice. we it took us three and a half hours to set up and rehearse the video but it probably took 15 minutes to shoot because once we once we knew what we were doing it was set and we're getting better about that of like let's spend as much time because actually one of the things is so daunting to anybody who does social media youtube stuff like that is the editing and so I used to just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot, and I'd end up with hours of footage for a two-minute video. Wow! Yeah, and so I got to take three days to cut it, and it's like, oh god, I'm never going to get yeah. this done. So now we figure, okay, well, if we just rehearse the heck out of what we're doing and we get it right once or twice, we're in really good shape. So we, so with that video, it was a good example. We spent we and we had like a fog machine going, and we had a couple lighting effects, and we're the only ones there. So we have to figure out like Joe's in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah pressing the button on the fog machine yeah before he comes onto the set and <laughs> we're like managing everything and ourselves. trying not to set off the fire alarms because <laughs> exactly. uh believe me we've done that here before yeah 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 <laughs> something about uh, something about uh gyms the when the ufc or any production comes in here they always have to have fog yeah and, and i don't know what it is about that yeah. uh, I, I always joke i said what gyms do you go to where all the fighters and, and managers are sitting here smoking? Are in this and, this foggy, yeah, misty the, kind of creating the atmosphere? I, exactly. Or, I don't. I yeah, don't yeah, get yeah. it, but it's a cool effect, I guess. <laughs> a, so let's back up a little bit because uh, pe people, most people, probably know you as Master Ken. I yeah. assume. Um, and when when you walked in the doors downstairs, I, I I 
I recognized you because you had your mustache. Yeah, which you, I don't always have. Yeah, and and yeah. so so I pulled you up on uh, IMDb uh, and uh, saw some clips of you with a clean shave and. Uh, and I'm like, I'm not going to recognize this guy without that mustache. It's so amazing. I, I wondered if that was a real mustache or if it was a, a fake it, mustache. It depends it's, on the time of year. <laughs> but it depends legit, on the time yeah. of year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like lately, especially, we've been filming a lot of, of Master Ken videos, and it becomes easier to just have it and to be able to rush over to the dojo. If something yeah. happens, you know, that's trending, I can literally just go over to the dojo, walk in, throw the throw the thing on, and just, like, do a video. Yeah. It becomes a little bit easier. And... Um, uh, yeah, so it, it's it, it has still always amazed me that uh, this makes such a difference because oh, yeah. I'll be walking at an event with Joe, who plays Todd, and he uh, people will come up to us and they'll be like, "You're from you're from the Master Ken thing." Into and the they'll, dojo, they'll hand me the camera, be like, "Can you take a picture of me oh, and Todd?" Because they don't funny. know that I'm Master that Ken. Awesome! It's, yeah. it's 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 amazing that 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 yeah. that one thing makes so much that difference. Is, that's awesome. Um, that and the fact that Master Ken uh, has a very particular uh, look on his face. He never yeah, smiles. Exactly. So all I got to do to hide is a smile, but Ken is always and, yeah. There you go, you the know, eyebrow. Ken, yeah, Ken just transformed like that one look. So yeah. and the so, gee, and the gee. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. You hardly ever to, see him without yeah. the uniform. Yeah. So and, and that's what, that brings up a funny thing, Todd. So Todd is the actual owner of the facility, and I, and I've seen that that video in so many. Or I've seen that gym now in so many videos. Where, where is that place? It's, it's still, over off of yeah. yeah. It's uh, off uh, Jefferson, and it's actually on Ellison near Jefferson and Osuna, um, and it's. Uh, um, it's a, a big facility. He just did a bunch of improvements to it. Actually, we just got new mats and a oh, new wow. paint job, and he's expanding the school and getting more students and everything. It's been kind of a cool thing to watch and, and participate in. And and um, and he's a he's a Kempo black belt, and uh, and so he uh, teaches and trains during the day, and then has the uh, the grace to to agree to help me brainstorm yeah. and make videos at night. It's a heck of a schedule for him. Uh, we both have multiple jobs that we do. Um, not just the show, um, but it's a it's it's a it's this crazy thing that we just didn't you know. I'm sure that neither one of us, when I went to him six years ago and said, "I got this idea for like this weird uh, video thing I want to shoot," and he's like, "Well, you can use my school if you want." And um, here we are, yes. six years later. So that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> whose whose idea whose idea was it to, to to start this whole Master Ken thing? Was it yours? Or? Yeah, I I had worked on uh, some other like web series was becoming a thing and I didn't really know what it was, but I, I worked on a couple of other people's web series. I acted in one, uh, for a really talented director named Hannah McPherson, who now has, uh, has her own show, uh, tagged on, uh, on Verizon go 90. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, she went on to do really she she, went big. Yeah. yeah she did a, a, awesome. a local web series here and then wrote another series that got picked up and I now she's it. in, she's in her third season. See, I love hearing that. stories like that. Oh yeah. She's a total local success story and she's based in LA now, but she comes back to New Mexico to film her show and she's, awesome. she's fantastic. I worked on her show. I worked on a, a, another show in Santa Fe where I was, I did some of the camera work and I was like this seems like a cool idea it'd be kind of cool to do an episodic kind of thing and because i uh because i've been a hobbyist as a martial artist for a long time i thought well i could do i could do something about martial arts and i was also a huge fan at the time of the bbc version of the office with ricky gervais yeah and so i was like i want to do a show like that but about something that i know about yeah. and so since so we just plugged it into the dojo and that was the way it started and then it's evolved you know it started as like a sitcom kind of a thing and now it's changed into master ken like teaching his art of ameridote to the world yeah. um and uh and yeah it was also it was just the first thing that i ever put online that ever got any traction i had put short films that i had written and directed at film school and all these other little things that i had done little commercials and things and nothing really you know i get like 200 views in like a year that and it'd tough, be, yeah. be like wow it's really hard to get any traction online and then the first episode of of enter the dojo got like ten thousand views in like two weeks and i was like oh wow okay so the, there's interest in this there's an yeah. audience for this and so from there we just said okay well let's see let's see how we can develop this. And that just sort of, you know, we were off and, off and running. And were you kind of making, from the beginning, were you kind of making fun of the whole, like, I know you're kind of poking fun at martial arts. Um, did you did you think, you know, let, let's poke fun at it. And I think that's going to be something because no, I, no, I'd never seen that before where someone was just uh, lampooning martial arts. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's probably been done before. but Yeah, uh, there's this kind of... Um, 
there's this interesting thing I think in a in, in a in American culture or Western culture of um, I mean you know whatever you want to call it like commercialization American exceptionalism franchising like making things into a business and and um, losing touch with the origin of things was what I noticed because uh, my first dojo that I trained at uh, was very connected to the uh, I mean we would my instructor would communicate with the instructors in Okinawa and make sure that we were doing things that were traditional and that were in keeping with the origin of the art. That was a very important thing. And I just noticed that a lot of American dojos seem to have no idea what the origin of the art was. There was never a consensus on what the right way to do a particular technique was. There seemed to be a disconnect. Yeah. And there also at the same time seemed to be this obsession with the street there was always talk yeah. of well in street fighting in the street yeah. things will be this way yeah. and yet uh there was no way to replicate or field test that without putting yourself in serious danger so there was this whole world of theory where people or instructors all over the world get away with saying well in the street you're just going to rip out his throat and you're just like do you know that do you know <laughs> yeah. that i'm going to be able to rip his throat out have uh, you actually seen that happen? have you seen or done that yeah, before exactly, yeah. and so there's this massive amount of theory based street fighting schools that um are quite honestly for better or worse never taken to task for whether or not anything they teach works or, or or anything like that and yet also not connected to the origin of the art and so i was just fascinated with that i just thought that was funny to me and i was and what i tell people and anyone who's seen uh, seen interviews i've done before i always tell them that actually the character that i relate to personally is anthony the orange belt character who's always questioning the instructor yeah. being like why would that work <laughs> i'm more that guy and and so uh uh with all of those dynamics and training at various dojos you know, for years, I thought, well, maybe somebody else will get this. So, yeah. so Ken, that's how Ken kind of grew out of that idea of a guy who um, may or may not have ever been tested in real life, but is 100% convinced that he is the baddest dude out there and that his martial yeah. art is the one that doesn't suck. Everybody yeah. else's sucks. Yeah, I love that. But his is the one that doesn't suck. Because I had heard, no matter what dojo I went to, whether it was a Kempo dojo or a Jiu-Jitsu dojo, MMA, Aikido, whatever their style was, was the right one. Yeah. And everybody else is studying the wrong one. And so that was, I think, something that resonated when we created the videos, thinking, oh my God, I've heard, I've had an instructor that talks like that. Or, you know, or, or some people even message me and they're like, I've said that in class. And so they, they found it relatable. And I think that was a big part of what made Ken uh, interesting in the beginning. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I, th I, think, I think he'd be a great coach because watching, watching those videos, you're, you, you teach it with such enthusiasm and right. passion <laughs> that, that uh, you believe in it. I mean, yeah. even though it's make-believe and you're, right. you're, 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 the way you teach, it reminds me of Greg Jackson the way or, or Winkle John or any of the, any of the coaches down there. That, when they're when they're teaching a class, they're just so passionate about mm -hmm. it, and, and, and confident. If you if exactly. you say things confidently, man, the people will just go along with you. You know whether it's right <laughs> or wrong. And and yeah, obviously, and Ken is kind of you know again, Ken's this weird thing where like he teaches things where you go, well, obviously that's not a real technique, but he carries himself as if it is. So so I mean, there are even people who comment on the videos going, you know, he's got a point. He's got a point about what he's saying about you know it's, it's, stomping the groin or whatever. Exactly. So. <laughs> I want to. I want to pull up. Uh, let's see. Where, let me try to find. Oh, yeah. That. I want to pull up a clip now. Sure. Because uh, it, it was one of the first ones. It was one of the first ones that I saw. Mr. Producer's got to put me on the bigger screen here, so I guess there we go. Stand by. We we got to get our our little technical difficulty stuff here. Okay. Do not attempt. <laughs> Master Ken oh, here with yeah. another episode of Master Ken's Privates. I'm here today with Michelle Watterson, who is known to many as the Karate Hoochie. <clears throat> hottie. Sorry, the Hottie Hoochie. No, no. Karate Hottie. Right, close enough. Today she's going to be teaching us the technique known as the Ass Kick. Axe Kick. That actually makes more sense. <laughs> All right, well, today we're demonstrating the axe kick, and yeah, one so, of the reasons why this kick is so effective yeah, we, we is because... Yeah, we can, we can turn that one off now. If me and my opponent are... I, I think we can. <laughs> there we go. 
there we go. Sorry about that. No, but but yeah, it's funny how you implemented uh, a couple of our fighters in there with Michelle Waters, and there's another one with Greg and mm-hmm. and, and Julie Kensey from ma- many years ago. Yep. She's moved yep. on to her, her Invicta Invicta fame now. Yep. She's doing yep. that, running that organization. But uh, it, it's the way you the way you've implemented them. It, it, it kind of gave you street cred because mm-hmm. like nah, man, now now this guy is actually bringing in these guys that. They're the, the the masters of MMA. Right, right. And you did another skit where you're you're making fun of. Uh, uh, there's another one where you're the uh, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. One of the funniest ones I've seen where you're you're trying to um, how how to defeat how to defeat any Jiu Jitsu move is with the double tap. Yeah, the double tap. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> no matter no matter what no matter what position you get in, uh, just that's all you got to do. Tap them twice and they let go. And and, and it's funny. It's, it's it's true because. <laughs> My 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 short stint in, in uh, jujitsu uh, that was always if, if they're always getting into something to hurt just double tap yeah and they always let go and then let go <laughs> but in, in a real fight in a real fight is that going to happen yeah I'm going to have to try that out next time well and then other, again and, and another thing and that you kind of poke fun about something that. that we've done in jest and then other people say you know that might actually work because people are used to that world you know <laughs> exactly. you just try tapping out in a fight you know yeah they're going to go that, after them yeah they're going to uh, feel that double tap yeah like, oh oh. Oh shoot! He like I should let him go. He <laughs> yeah, tapped out. Exactly. Even though he was just pointing a knife at me. <laughs> right, you know? right. 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 Yeah. But it also yeah it is really great that fighters are willing to come on uh, the show that that other martial arts uh, celebrities uh, uh, you know like uh, again you know like obviously Michelle Waterson who's really awesome to have on and um, um, you know we've had Keith Jardine and Javi Vasquez and. Uh, um, like I said, we just had Frank Lester. We haven't released that episode yet. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, you know, people like Chris Casamasa, who was a uh, scorpion in the Mortal Kombat movies, oh, wow. has been on the show. And and uh, um, we've just people are still really enthusiastic about being being guests. And, and we like uh, adding that dimension because it also crosses over fan bases because those people have their own following. And then they they uh, sort of cross pollinate with the Master Ken following. So are these guys reaching out to you? I mean, say, hey, you know, I've, it depends. I've seen your series. I want to be on your show. Right. It's it cool. depends. Yeah. Sometimes they reach out. Sometimes I just get messages from them saying, hey, can I be on your show? Yeah. And, and other times, um, other times we reach out to them. Um, uh, other times we just have mutual connections. Uh, when we had Michael J. White uh, on yeah. the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was really great. He happened to be filming a movie. He, he was on your show. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. I'll have to, we'll have to pull now. it up. His name isn't in that. the, his name isn't in the title. Ah. The, the, the video is called How to Fight a Clown. That's interesting. Because um, he, he has like an issue with clowns it turns out well when he was um, here when he was here in albuquerque filming that movie he uh he dropped into the gym yeah uh quite a bit yeah because he um he's obviously a martial arts fan he yeah and, and black belt and like seven different uh, yeah an incredible athlete yeah, yeah, and, exactly. and yeah yeah incredible martial artist and he i was a fan of his uh i know you know obviously seen him way back in when he did spawn but but uh, you know been aware of uh, black dynamite yeah. and stuff like that and he was in town doing uh that movie and we the same makeup artist who did the makeup for season four of our show was the makeup artist on his movie yeah and they started talking about master Ken into the dojo and he's like oh yeah he's like i've been meaning to contact those guys and she handed him her phone and said here he is you know wow. and, and so he agreed to drop by the dojo and do an episode That's perfect yeah we're, yeah we're gonna have to look that one up now yeah I, I, I didn't see that one yeah he, yeah he it's how, how a, to fight a clown he is uh, he is such a badass we all know we all know him uh as, as just being that 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 hero badass yep. role in every single movie and, yep. and it's funny when when he came into the gym a lot of of course everybody recognized him but the few that didn't uh you just say spawn so, oh right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's great, and uh, uh, he was a lot of fun to work with too. Very, very open and very interested in in talking about what the video could be and what would be funny, and um, uh, uh, willing to stay and until we felt like we had all the footage yeah. we needed. I mean, he's a real professional. He's really great. That helps. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, let me let me try to let me try to play another one here. I think it'll work. What's this one? But we got no news sound. on the internet, and I saw that Nazis have once again become a danger to oh, Americans yeah. in this country. It's one of this our controversial two ones. Things. Very controversial. One, Hitler has succeeded in sending Nazis, time traveling Nazis, through time because they're time traveling, so they travel through time from the height of his regime back in 1972 to 2017, present day, most likely with the mission of assassinating the great grandchildren of Indiana Jones. Two, this means that we need to be ready to defend ourselves. So, that's why this video is called, How to Punch a Nazi. A 
According to my research, most modern day Nazis are walking around wearing polo shirts and carrying torches to find their way around in the dark of night, which makes sense because the flashlight wasn't even invented until 1981, so they wouldn't know what those are. But I must say, if you're in the habit of walking up and just punching a Nazi, two things. Number one, that's not legal, okay? So you better have a good lawyer. Uh, I don't recommend that you do that unless you can prove that they were an imminent threat to you. Number two, I'm seeing improper form. I'm seeing a lot of punching like this, okay? With just the bottoms here, okay, of the palms by a group known as Antifa, which I believe stands for Antifashionistas. They are so enraged seeing grown white men wearing polo shirts, cargo shorts, uh, and usually flip-flops. They just, they just run up and they just go like this, okay? Luckily love it, love it, love it. Yeah, that was definitely a controversial one. Yeah, and the, and the reason I <laughs> the reason I wanted to talk about that one is is, is because we we recently got had our had our little uh, run with run. Well, we, we I guess I shouldn't say recently. We we often run into trolls. Yeah, uh, we run a social media with we've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, we we are attacked so often as, yeah. as a gym. And if one of us screws up, it we all screw up. And we we end up getting tons and tons of trolls just yep. just saying nonsense. And so that video, when you said uh, that uh, it was a controversial one, and YouTube wanted to yank it because it was because of the language of of uh, Nazi. Is that what it was? We what? don't know. So the YouTube policy has changed drastically. I mean, it feels like overnight. It's been oh, over yeah. the past year. But they monetarily too. Yeah, monetarily. Well, and that's the thing is that they didn't pull the video, but they demonetized it. They turned the ads oh, off. See, so cool. even though it was going viral, um, we didn't make hardly any money off of it. So they allowed it to stay on. I'm thankful they didn't just yank the whole video. Um, but and we were frustrated by that because it seemed like um, something that uh, the le if you watch the video, we really worked hard to stay in the middle of the road. I didn't feel like it was a leftist or rightist yeah. video. It was a commentary on something that was happening. And we mentioned, as you saw in the clip, uh, Antifa, just as well as we m mentioned the, the modern day Nazi, you know, thing. And uh, that video actually on Facebook got about six million views. Wow. And it was shared in the same day by Occupy Democrats on the far left. And then Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos, yeah. who's an alt-right yeah, guy. The ultimate right. Yeah, yeah, like so. And both of them were like, this video is hilarious. And so if that happens wow. then you feel like well one then we must then what's the problem um youtube actually changed the thumbnail without telling us and i think it was because we had the uh the swastika i was but about it, to say that, but it yeah. was obscured yeah. it was like over ken's shoulder it was like you know implying that it was behind yeah him. but it, but but you, if you could see that swastika i mean you, it's, it's kind of a dual purpose you know that it's if, when people see that they're going to click on it right but for the same reason, YouTube, since you could see it, the, it was going to cause problems. Right. But at the same time, so does that mean that we can't show a clip of, do we have to go back and if we show a clip of Indiana Jones punching a Nazi and the Nazi is wearing a symbol, should Believe we blur me. that out? It. Like, like, it. Where, like, where do we start? Yeah. So this, this, this culture of corporate censorship is very, very interesting because uh, no one wants to uh, go out of their way to, to say they want to limit anybody's free speech or expression. But what they can say is, I'm not going to pay for something that's associated with something I don't like. Yeah. And so that's where all the power is right now is corporate censorship. And overnight, uh, the new YouTube algorithm and the new the new ads, I just saw a, a, a article this morning saying YouTube is gonna start yanking videos that have any reference to the Tide Pod yeah, thing that's, that's happening yeah, that's where, going viral where right teenagers yeah. are swallowing, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and on the one hand I say, well, that makes sense, but on the other hand, because it's a trending topic, we were thinking about making a video making fun of it. And now we know if we put that anywhere in the title, it's be yanked. it'll be yanked. So we can't even comment mm -hmm. on something that's controversial, even if our intention is good. And that kind of opens the door to a lot of interesting things. And it's changed the platform because YouTube used to reward you for being controversial because it drove traffic. Exactly. It would get people to click on it. The more angry you made people or the more upset or the more controversial you were, the more traffic you got, the more ad revenue you made. It is literally now becoming the polar opposite where the sheer mention of a controversial topic that an advertiser might not like, that video might not even be allowed on the platform. Yep. And so it's this this kind of overnight, it's become this sort of um, almost network TV level standard of what is what you're allowed to say, what you're not allowed to say. And I just think it's it's concerning. I, I think it's well intentioned. 
but I it starts to make me wonder what that looks like in the future of people not being able to even discuss a controversial topic because yeah. advertisers might be af- upset about it. You called it uh, political, uh, I mean, uh, I call it political correctness, but you called it corporate Corporate censorship. censorship. Yeah, I just think it, that's... It, but it, but it's, it's, it's the same thing because, uh, I mean, now you, you it seems like you have to be so politically correct. And, you have to and, be careful. You and, have to and, be really and, careful. And, and exactly. And, the, and these videos, we... Uh, I can't remember. He's one of the, the bigger. Uh, he's one of the bigger YouTube guys out Logan there. Logan Paul. Yeah, Logan Paul with the with the suicide force, right? Or whatever which in Japan. yeah, and, which was a really messed up. You know, obviously poor judgment um, on on what he did. But um, does it lead to discussion that is positive? Um, and you know, some people like seeing that he got yanked off Google Preferred and he got shut down on a couple of other things, and they're like, "Well, that's the consequences of your actions." And I don't even necessarily. I don't necessarily. I'm not saying I disagree with it, but I look at it and say, um, is the trend going to continue to be silencing things that we don't like to see or hear? That's ridiculous. Or, or and where do we draw the line? And what what, what is going to offend what uh, part of society that, 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 that right. they say, okay, now this this is bad, but right. some say this is good. Who, who's the decider? How did YouTube become the decider or Facebook or right. Instagram? These right. guys yank. There's like a whole staff of people just yanking videos yeah. because it's politically not correct. Or, or and we're that. trying to figure out the ide- in, in the identity of the show, where does it leave us? Because we got known for being controversial. That's how we got everybody's attention. And so do people want a PG version of Master Ken that's family friendly and not, not offensive and is just fart jokes and, and just, you know, <laughs> something that's easy for everybody to laugh at? And, and no or, one's going to watch it anymore. Right. A, can we broach uh, tricky topics? Um, and so far, we're 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 treading a little lighter than we than we used to. But I don't know if we're going to keep doing that because we're sort of like, well, the show is the show, the yeah. character is the character, and so trying to find that line. Um, uh, but it's yeah, it's a very interesting time in that respect as far as uh, the way YouTube has changed, the way Facebook is is that they just announced they're going to change their algorithm as far as like what is visible on people's pages again. And um, uh, so on the one hand, the social media stuff has been really great to get content out there, to build an audience, to build a following. And yet uh, navigating the waters continues to be really, really challenging. Yeah, and, and that it brings up a point, you know, people people don't typically like change. They they like they like the way things they've they grew up with the, their certain values or whatever. And they they find. I personally find your videos hilarious just the way they are. If you, you. if you were to downplay them or change them due to politically correct, I don't necessarily think that I will tune in as much because it's probably not as funny. You know, right? I mean, and you that's, can try to make it funny, but you're well, going to lose some of your your core audience. Absolutely. That you've had. And I'm trying to remember. I don't. I, I don't know if it was Bill Maher or somebody. I was watching somebody talk about the issue of political correctness and comedy. And they were saying that the interesting thing about a laugh, a genuine laugh, is that it's involuntary. If you find something exactly. funny, you cannot stop yourself. If something is genuinely funny, and that means it's true. So if you say something that is true and it makes people laugh, but it also upsets people, that's a really weird, that's yeah. a strange line yeah. to, to ride. So I think, I think, it's, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting time. So... Um, we'll see, we'll see how that, how that shakes out. But for now, um, you know, we still have a lot of dedicated fans, a lot of people who really like the show. We have a lot of really fun things planned for this year. Um, as far as new videos, new episodes, spinoff things, we've been talking for a while about a master can movie and, yeah, and we would, be huge. yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, and I, I feel like, I, I feel like it might be necessary at a certain point to just say, uh, make, make a master can movie and just put it on DVD and say, we purposely made a movie that we couldn't put on YouTube anyway. Yeah, like the, the, the uncensored version. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That we or have this edgy, you know, fully, fully, you know, full force kind of um, uh, right to the edge kind of master. Yeah, or, or make it a uh, make it a reality show where you're just traveling. Master Kid travels the world and right. goes to. Uh, 
goes to Singapore and, right. and fights with those guys. And <laughs> well, the, like the, those um, Thailand, you know. Uh, yeah, like those guys who have done the real the yeah. fight the fight science guys or whoever exactly. those guys like all the people who have like uh, traveled around the world or then are legit fighters. I mean, Ken could totally do that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be, <laughs> so, I, I think it'd be a hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Gotta, I'm sure stuff like that is in our future. I, yeah. I know it's uh, it's it's a tough thing. You got to find the uh, you got to find the right buyers for it and all that stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. The, the, as a, as a fan. I know there's a lot of fans on Facebook and, and Twitter listening to us, and they're saying, "Man, yeah, that's a great idea." So, yeah. You know, that, so, I, ho- I hope that uh, I hope that pans out. Yeah, me too. Me too. The growth of the show has always been um, slow and steady. We just we 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 make a giant leap, and then things cool off, and then we make another giant leap, and then things cool off. But um, uh, you know, we still enjoy doing the show. And um, uh, the fact that people still watch is to me a, a, a blessing, and I love the fact that people still pay attention to what forty six million. And, and, yeah, and growing. Would be awesome. Yeah. So what was that? And Blu Ray would be awesome. Blu Ray. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. bet. People still you, watch. You know, those of us with uh, that, that that get into Blu Ray, you know, with the surround sound, and <laughs> anymore people just want to look at it on their phone, and yeah, they don't even get the full effect anymore. It's, right, it's, right, it right. My mind. Yeah, we just I have grew to up see. in a different time. I yeah, well, hopefully, yeah, I would love, I would love, especially to do to do something that we just put on DVD. If people would buy it, yeah. you know, if I know the fans would buy a Master Ken movie on DVD, would we we could make yeah. something really funny. So what uh, what kind of People know you uh, obviously mostly as Master Ken, but uh, you you've done, as we talked about Sakar, you, you played that. Uh, were you like a CIA? Were you a CIA tech guy? Is that what you were? I in believe that scene? in the credits. I'm credited as drone operator. There you go, drone operator. Yeah, yeah, and that that is a bizarre thing because that was a that was a day and a half of work. I just went in the day before and got to sit down on rehearsal. And I was there. I remember that I was just at that motel right there at the I-25 and yeah. at, the, at the big eye. And, and and we. Yeah, that that was bizarre because yeah. it was like I found out that I got the part very very soon. It might have been the day or two before they actually needed me. Came in and I'm sitting there with you know Josh Brolin, Josh Brolin and Emily Blunt and Benicio, hanging, Benicio hanging, del hanging Toro. Shoulder looking. I know, and that and the weird the the weirdest thing about that is like you know I worked on the thing for one day. I had like two lines, and um, depending on which copy of the movie you buy, I'm on the back of the DVD. Oh really? Because there's a photo of them hovered around the computer. Uh, I'm going to have to look so at my like, DVD copy. There's then. like three super famous people that you should know who they are. And then this, and dude. Then this guy <laughs> With, without the mustache. Yeah. I mean, that photo actually ended up being used for promotion at the con film festival. And everything. like this, really? this one photo that well, they, that's because everyone's in it. Exactly. This yeah. one publicity still just happened to yeah. be there. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, when that started circulating, like friends, I went to high school were like, Hey, you're in this big movie. And I'm like, not really. I'm like in it for a second. <laughs> yeah. So don't, get too excited but i was happy that i made the cut yeah, and it was yeah. one of those things where uh you know of course denis is an amazing director he just did blade runner yeah. and roger deacon's legendary yeah. cinematographer done all the coen yep. brothers movies and everything so just you know when i luck out and i get to just kind of be i'm in the scene but i'm also feeling like a fly on the wall just kind of like l- watching the way everybody works and listening and watching the way they light and watching the way they discuss a scene and everything like that i i learn a lot too just sitting there and watching the people who are the epitome of what good storytelling, good acting, good directing, good good cinematography, everything. Watching the way they work is also really cool. You do learn a lot. I mean, even yeah. as even as security, I'm just standing there, had no real purpose because, I mean, who, who the heck's going to come crashing through the scene? Right. But they, they, they have us there, and it's cool. Right. I mean, it was a good gig. Yeah. But uh, you just sit there and listen to the way it all comes together. You yeah. Know, everyone just worships the director, and and, and then you got the PAs and the craft services and it's this big massive production it's just so fascinating to yeah. listen to everybody talk and their roles and how it all comes together i i love i love the the whole process of it it's mm-hmm. such a fascinating thing to be part of and for you to have been in some some uh, big budget stuff it's got to be a cool thing it's yeah it's fun stuff to tell the grandchildren about someday. it is it's exactly. it's really fun um and that one is as we were talking about before we started like came out to be a really great movie yeah. like because you also you don't know when you're working on a movie whether or not how it's going to come out whether or not people are actually going to see it is yeah. it going to go straight to video is it going to get a worldwide theatrical release like what's what's going to happen with these movies and is it going to be a good film and it was just inarguably a, a truly incredibly well-made film that i've seen many times not because i worked on it but because i just like watching that movie yeah. it's just a brilliant film um, and, and then getting to, yeah, to work on bigger stuff. Like I worked on uh, Scorch Trials, the Maze Runner uh, movie that shot here. Um, that was really fun. And, um, uh, and again, funny how 
uh, you work on some things very briefly and you make the cut. I made the cut yeah. of that one. I was on that one for two days. I and made, you never know what I never yeah, know. Never I know. worked on Lone Ranger for like 10 days. I'm in that movie for like wow. 10 seconds. <laughs> I was in all these different. In the background I sit, literally, I say like, uh, my line, I say like, hey, boy, give me them grapes. <laughs> that's and you only, you're famous now yeah, yeah you, and and like you can barely tell that yeah, you probably can't even tell that it's me and i was watching that thinking man that was 10 days of work just to be that one little clip and then other things you come in for a day and you're like right there you're like fully in your close-up makes it or whatever so you never know right yeah. you never know whether or not you're gonna make it hey, but, that's but it's cool it's still fun yeah it's a fun job regardless and yeah. it's and it's uh for having grown up wanting to work on movies and television, do things like that. It's um, every time I get to go to a set, it's exciting. Very few people get the uh, get that role where they're going to get that speaking part and they're going to be in every single scene. I mean, right. But at the same time, everybody has started uh, at the bottom. Yeah. Know, with uh, with these things, you know, they they probably started as a as a PA, you know, and right, right. Their, their way up to whatever, you know. There's the there's the ladder, the chain of command that. And a lot uh, of them are around for a long time. Yeah. They can be around for 20 years and yeah. just, I mean, you've been there and you're, you, you know, the business and you know, the people, but you haven't gotten your shot yet, yeah. you know? And so it's uh yeah, but it's two totally different worlds too, because I, I work on those things and really enjoy working on them. And, uh, and then, you know, master Ken is kind of this whole other realm, this own little niche within a niche of this YouTube thing of martial arts fans that has its own following. So the, the two worlds are totally different, especially with the live performance stuff that I do as Master Ken traveling around and making appearances uh, on years that I do that. It's it's like, uh, it's just a different world. Yeah. So, and he also did, he was in Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. He was a Marine. Oh yeah, that was, that oh, was there a you go. gig. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Former fighter here, uh, rest in peace, but uh, Tommy Truex. Oh yeah, yeah. Tommy yeah. Truex, yeah. we loved Tommy Truex. Yeah, Tommy, what a great Tommy. guy. Yeah, that, was a, that was a tough story, yeah. He, yeah. He was so in the prime of his life and and, and to hear that happening is was rough. Weird. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful yeah. guy. And actually I got to know him on Whiskey Tango. And I, uh, I always tell people, it's funny, like when I first met him, um, I didn't like him because I was intimidated by him because he was loud and funny and he was and he actually he was cast as one of the soldiers and he was in the army and I was cast as one of the soldiers. I have no real military yeah. experience. So he you was had to fake it. Too, yeah. Right? So he's Make talking it, yeah. about all his genuine experiences. And I'm like, who's this friggin guy? You know, <laughs> like like and then, of course, with the next day, he actually talked to me the way Tommy did. And he won me over in a heartbeat. And we had a great time. That's filming. cool. And he he became a you know I mean uh, I wish I'd gotten to know him better but all my interactions with him were wonderful and we actually had him on season four of of Enter the Dojo he played an MMA oh wow yeah he had cool. played an MMA fighter in a special episode we did and we did got to do some fight choreography with him and um, he was just a pleasure to 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 know and to work with and and everything so uh, yeah I'm I'm glad I got the chance I'm sorry that he was you know taken from us so so early. Yeah, that was that was that was that was a that was a hit for the whole MMA community. Those of us, uh, especially that knew him, this, it, uh, it's tough. Yeah, are you are you from New Mexico? I'm from back east originally. I'm from okay. Maine. So when, when did you come to Albuquerque? I moved here in 2001. Um, my uncle has uh, has been out here for a long time, and I visited College of Santa Fe film program while I was visiting him, and I was like, this is a cool. Sit situation they had garson studios up there and yeah. they had all these things that i liked and i thought and at the time i was delivering pizza nice in augusta maine uh trying to figure out what i was going to do with my life i hadn't gone to college i've been there yeah i had taken a few years off and i was starting to think how many more years am i going to take off before i figure out what i'm doing and uh, i applied and i got a scholarship and it was suddenly a reality that i could go Santa Fe, New Mexico. To film school, of all places in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And it just, the timing of everything was really uh, just fortuitous because I, I got here and arrived. And uh, uh, by the time I graduated, uh, the incentives were in full swing. ABQ Studios had been built. Um, Breaking Bad was starting. In Plain Sight was starting. It was becoming a hotbed in a way it hadn't. I mean, film has always been a part of New Mexico, but it was having uh, a, 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 oh, yeah. a huge no, it effect got huge. You're right. on yeah. the economy, yeah. and there were all these opportunities. And so I was like, okay, well, I, I, I should move to L.A. because that's where everybody is. But I kept saying, well, I'll move there once I run out of work here. Yeah. And I just never ran out of work. I just There was always an opportunity here. So I just stayed, and, and it's been this great place. 
the politics, the politics of the time, they didn't quite get the whole Hollywood thing yet. They, they weren't on board 100% with it, so they had to fight it a little bit, and they it kind of went away again recently, but Governor yeah. Martinez is bringing it back. I mean, right. everyone's starting to see the, the benefit, the huge revenue stream that comes yeah. to the state. And when, it goes through some yeah. growing pains, and it falls in in favor and out of favor, depending on uh, the, the discussion. But I think that, that because so many, because there are now so many New Mexicans who make their living, um, in an industry either directly working on set or in an industry that these movies and television shows that come here support, uh, the trickle down kind of, you know, of, of hotels and rental cars and, and catering businesses and all these things that these people have to, I think that so many people now know somebody yeah. who makes some of their living off of that, oh, yeah. that it's, it's kind of known now. I feel like it's kind of well-established. I yeah, think that's great. And, and I just saw an article recently where we're, I think Atlanta, I think is number one right now, mm -hmm. uh, where they're, where they're filming the walking dead or, yep. or, or whatever, but, but we're, we're, we're up there. Yeah. We're always, we're always in yeah. the top of the top of the list and it's always still a good place to be and a good place to film. And it's, it's great that it's such a film friendly place, particularly being a, by comparison, kind of a small, uh, city, yeah. uh, you know, Albuquerque specifically in Santa Fe, of course. Well, like I said, when I, when I started out the first time, my first introduction to the whole Hollywood thing was, was as, as a police officer doing the security thing. But the first time I went, uh, I signed up for an overtime slot and it was for a movie set. I pulled up thinking, oh, okay, whatever, it's going to be a couple trucks and some guys with flags blocking off the street. And and they told me where the 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 set was, and they said, "Well, no, you gotta you gotta go check in over at uh, at base camp." Right. And I pull into base camp, and it was just trailers and <laughs> right. semis, and <laughs> and uh, I can't even remember what movie it was. I think it was it was with Gerard Butler, the gamer. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was such a huge production, and and downtown they shut down downtown. They had turned it into a a war zone. Yep. There were bodies laying on the ground, yeah. fake bodies. And, and I'm like, what the heck is it? It was yeah. just the coolest thing. But I'm looking around at just the amount of people that were involved in this thing. And I was like, wow, this is legit stuff. Man. Yeah. This the first really time cool. every one of these guys is getting a paycheck. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And the first time that you get to see the scope of, yeah. of what a major production yeah. uh, involves, it's just, it's, it's really impressive. And it's, it's cool that you can live in a place like, like New Mexico, like Albuquerque or Santa Fe, and and be exposed to that and work on it. I, yeah. I still think I, I feel really really lucky because I do like living here. I like New Mexico very much, and uh, and to have been able to do the work that I love and live in a place that I like is great. You mentioned uh, Breaking Bad. Did you get any part of that? So I'm I always forget which episode it is. It's the second to last. I don't know if that's six or seven in season one because they had to. They had to stop early because of the writer's strike. Yeah. The season yeah, was supposed that. to go yeah. on longer. Yeah. But they had to wrap it up early because I think it was, it was, yeah, I was pretty sure it was the w, WGA strike. So they had to stop. Um, but I, there's an episode, this isn't spoiling it, I don't think, for anybody who hasn't seen the show. But yeah, if you haven't seen it by yeah, now, yeah, it's, like, it's been out for, two, yeah, it's yeah, been done for 10 you're, years. You're bullshit if you yeah, haven't yeah, seen it. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> so, so there's an episode where they have to get like a, 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 a large amount of chemicals to make a bigger batch of drugs than they normally yeah, do. Yeah. And there's a security guard at the chemical plant that they lock in a porta potty. And you're the security guard. That's me. Oh, that's awesome. I get locked in the portable. <laughs> I got to go watch that now. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. That was what kept me out of. Uh, uh, that was season two? Uh, that was season one. Season one. So yeah. You yeah, right yeah. from the beginning. That's yeah. Awesome. And it, it's sort of like great. And it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because yeah. um, I don't even know. I feel like they had maybe started. They had maybe released a couple of episodes, but nobody knew what the show was going to be. And so um, I'm happy I got on the show at all but like everyone was just kind of talking on set about like yeah i feel like this could go this could be interesting yeah. it could be a cool show and then of course it becomes this phenomenon right yeah. you know so so it's uh it and it was a lot of fun to work on it we shot shot that stuff at like 2 a.m in the freezing cold and it was it was great and that's one of those shows that uh, that we talked about earlier where you don't know how big it's going to be until until it's already huge. And they I remember. No I remember. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they had confident confidence oh, in what yeah, they were course, making, uh, but I remember the conversations behind the scenes talking about what they liked about the show, what yeah. they hoped for the show. But I mean, you. I feel like you would be foolish to to do any show and say this is going to be a phenomenon. Yeah. Like that's a good way to jinx it. They just felt confident that they were making a show they believed in. And yet, of course, it becomes by regarded by many to be one of the best television shows that's ever been made. Vince Vince Gilligan. I yeah. remember I met him. I think it was season two actually when I when I uh, I, I started working on season one. 
but season two, I, I actually met the guy. It was some downtime. We were just all standing around, and, and uh, I was talking to him, and he's like, have you seen the show? And I, I was embarrassed because I hadn't seen it yet. And I said, no, you know, I, ha I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. And so I think um, I think I went that night, and I actually watched the first episode because it was out on uh, Netflix or something at the time. And, yep. and, and so I watched, and I just got hooked. Yeah. And I said, holy crap, this is, so this is what I've been uh, hanging out with this whole time. And, and yeah. I just watched it from then on. I couldn't wait for the next season. I'd be, get so frustrated. But it got so huge. I yeah. Could, I can't. Be I couldn't believe how huge that thing is. Now everybody knows Albuquerque is Breaking Bad, and and I think that's great. And I, you know, yeah. I've I've heard some some people being frustrated. They yeah. don't want to be known for that. But I think that people. I think that people. A lot of people are also still smart enough to separate. Uh, you know that that one aspect of a city or a storyline or whatever does not encapsulate everything that a city is about or what the people are about. I just think it's cool the the, the sheer name recognition, the recognition of the Sandias, yeah. the recognition of certain locations that were filmed in yeah. the show. They have the Breaking Bad tours and everything. I, and I and again, I feel like it does a great uh, it does such great things for the reputation of New Mexico film. Uh, specifically when a show gets made here that is such high quality that it captures the world's attention. And, well, and, and that, it, yeah, it's still bringing money to the economy. Exactly. exactly. Like you said, there's, there's so many now better call Saul picked up. Yep. Uh, four, and, four seasons, five seasons, wherever they are. I think it. we're like, three. I think, I think they're filming three, right film now. three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Three okay. right now. But, but yeah, the, I, I watched the first season then I dropped, I dropped satellite. I, I, and we take the heavyweights to the doghouse. Well, and I was about yeah. to mention that we, you talked about the tour. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I became the uh, pseudo tour guide of the Breaking Bad. Uh, oh no, the kidding. Breaking Bad tour guide because having worked all the locations, yep. I, I you know, know where, where everybody all the is. Locations are so <laughs> that's great. B.J. Penn and his brother, when they were training here, they wanted to go see the tour, so I, I took them to all the little spots. You know, nice uh, Walter's house, of course. And, yeah. And uh, those and, poor people yeah, yeah, <laughs> with all the pizzas yeah, yeah. on their roofs uh, and everything. Well, well, you saw they built a, a fence. Around I their saw. House, finally. Yeah, the I big saw. old wrought iron. I know because I, I went so many times without the fence. And then it was when the Polish guys, came, the Polish fighters, Marcin Tybura and his manager and and, and Kevin, the, some some of our Polish fighters came. And they all they wanted to see it, so I took them to we took them to Dog House and yeah. had some had some hot dogs, and then went to all the locations and. Uh, I said, well, it's changed a little bit, the, the house. Now there's a big, giant uh, wrought iron gate in front of the house yeah. because too many people were trespassing and doing stupid stuff. But uh, they loved it. They, 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 these fighters, just they just love because that's how they know Albuquerque. And they oh, come sure. here to train and sure. fight and whatever. But they want to see these cool little things that they've seen on TV. Because, yeah, you see elements from your yeah. favorite movies no matter where they are. Yeah. And, it, and it sort of exactly. just it gives you that nostalgia of like what you love about the show. Yeah. But it's uh, it, Breaking Bad has been a really cool thing for the for the for the state and for Albuquerque and, and uh, Hollywood in general. It put uh, put a lot of put uh, Vince Gilligan on the map. I will tell you what, he, oh yeah, he's he's huge. Uh, you know that that whole anyone anyone that had anything to do with that. That series is is a rock star now. It's so cool to see where they've all gone. Yeah, and listening to him talk in podcasts about the process, and listening to him talk about the fact that like when he pitched the idea, they were like. That is a terrible idea for a show. Yeah. But if you if you want to do it, because he'd had some success with X Files, and so they, they kind of they, they believed in his ability. Of they were like, we don't get why you want to make this show, but I guess if yeah. you want to make, you know, we'll let, we'll let you make a little bit. Of, we'll, let, we'll let you make the pilot, I guess. And and then it turns out to be and, this and a lot of people thing. don't remember that they, you know, the, X, the X Files thing that he was he was part of that. that yeah, X Files. Yeah. yeah, and, and uh, he's he's put out some good stuff, but this this will be forever what he's. He's remembered as the so far. I mean, right. I doubt he wants to be remembered to put that for going forward, but uh, uh, forever. But because uh, he wants to make other projects, but it, it's cool that uh, that they were able to come up with such a cool thing, and they kept Albuquerque. Uh, they kept Albuquerque in the loop, and they made it as genuine as they could. Right. Uh, and, and it, it's, I, I love it. Uh, what else? Uh, what else? What other kind of movies you? Uh, well, I'm hoping I made the cut for. This is a great way to jinx it. I'm hoping I made the cut for the uh, the Waco uh, the Waco thing that's coming out on. Yeah, I just uh, heard about uh, that. Yeah, Spike. I think it's on Spike. Did it just finish or? Crash for you guys. Yeah, our millennials. I know, millennials. right? I that's what isn't that, that weird? Yeah. What was weirdest was I got to be so I I, I got to be part of the guys who are surveilling the compound and they built uh, so they built the, the compound. You were the FBI or DEA guys? Uh, yeah, 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 we were the DEA guys and the and so they um uh or was it. 
ATF. I don't remember. Some kind of, yeah. I think well, it's ATF. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were all so, there, but yeah. Right, right. So so we're watching, and they um, uh, they built an exact replica of the compound. And when we drove out there and saw the set, I was taken back to being a kid and seeing it burn. Yeah, all the footage. I, I watched it burn on the news. Like, yeah, well, I, yeah, exactly. I remember watching yeah. that and going, Oh, it was crazy. God, this yeah, it was bizarre. live. Yeah, they broke yeah. every channel to show that. Yeah, yeah. I, re I remember. The Branch Davidian. Yeah, I remember seeing that. My mother yelling at the news and me going, what's a Branch Davidian? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Yeah. But but uh, but how fascinating to be part of it, it being a historical thing now and that them coming back and and uh, and uh, giving their their take on it. Um, but that was really great. I think it's going to be a great uh, a great series. John Leguizamo. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the, okay. the stuff I got to see him do was really great. Great actor. And um, um, Taylor is it ta uh, Taylor Kitsch? Is that is that is that the guy? Sounds right. We'll Sounds right. We'll Google it. What? what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the guy playing Koresh is amazing. I you know I got to watch just a little bit, kind of like it's so through, cool how they find a guy that looks a, like it. Yeah, 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 just kind of like looking through the doorway, watching his scenes, and being like, oh, he's doing a good job. Yeah. So I think you that's I think that's going to be yeah. You nailed it. Yeah, I think that that I, I have high hopes for it. I think it's going to be well received. The, the stuff that I saw was great, and uh, and so that's uh, that's coming out. And see, uh, Matt knew his name, so you gotta you gotta put him in the show. Make sure he makes the cut. Producers, yeah, please. It's probably too late. <laughs> Jeez, but come on, I, <laughs> throw a bone here. Where, where was that filmed? Where, where, where was uh, the compound? That, out? that that stuff was out in. Uh, I hope I'm allowed. It's, it's going to come out. Uh, yeah, it's secret. It's just, I hope I'm allowed to say it. Regardless, GPS what are, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was out in Moriarty. It was out uh, uh, in the Moriarty. Area. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Like way, way out. Yeah, like so going out where, of course, uh, flat and all that. Yeah, out by go, cowboy where yeah, cowboy lives. Like out where, like McCall's pumpkin patch, just like just driving, yeah, yeah, okay. driving way, way, way past that out into the the you know middle of nowhere. So they everything. recreated the whole compound. Yeah, they rebuilt it. They burned it down just like. And I heard that. Yeah, they wow. had it set to burn. They had it so they could use it. I don't. I don't know that they. I don't know if they shot interiors. In there, I don't know if they built it just for exteriors or if they did both. But I had heard that they uh, that that was that they did in fact uh, they didn't just do effect. You know, they yeah. burnt that one down. I wish I could have seen that. No, um, yeah, even though course. it would have been morbid, it would have been kind of fascinating <laughs> yeah, just uh, to see it but. because you saw it live. Yeah, way, yeah, way yeah. Back when. yeah. Was, like, yeah. Your fascination was like the Unabomber. You know, his shack. You know, they had the museum. And yeah, they turned visit. it into a. Uh, they turned it into some kind of a sightseeing thing. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I did not know that. Well, yeah, you can it, go see the shack, the Unabomber shack. I can go see the Unabomber shack. Well, and another one that I didn't know about <laughs> is, is uh, you remember the, uh, the the kill the killer down at uh, Elephant Butte Lake. You may hear about that guy. The Oh. He was kidnapping prostitutes, and and uh, he had like a torture chamber. He called it a toy box. <laughs> they, oh my god! They, they literally to towed that trailer to the FBI headquarters here in Albuquerque. Oh my god! And, and people were uh, people were looking at it over the fence. It's not it's, like a thing you can tour now, though, right? No, no, no. Okay, not, that's no, what no, I thought you were going to say. No, like, no, you no, know, for five didn't. bucks, you can go see the elephant. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how it got out that it was there, <laughs> or, or but but uh, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. People are hey, sick. Hey, I watch a ton of forensic files. I am I I have a I. Uh, I, I've come to terms a little bit with my fascination with true crime and criminals and killers and everything like that. I watch, I watch all the documentaries. I, you know, for better uh, or worse, I, I'm fascinated by it. Being I'm a cop for almost thirty years, I, you get oh, numb I, to it. Of you course, get, of yeah, course, and, yeah, and, yeah. And so when people talk about it, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty, pretty nasty. But but not you not have surprising. no idea what I've seen. Yet. Right, right. I bet not surprising at uh, all. But but but, uh, but yeah, people uh, people are very. Uh, You'd be amazed with uh, how evil people are out there, and and p people are sick. To there, there are weird, sick people that just are fascinated by it, and they have to see. They they want to get into that culture. And, yeah, yeah, it's very creepy, actually. But, yeah, well, uh, I watched. I I was watching that stuff so much that I had to back off of it a little bit because I was starting to worry that everybody around me was a killer <laughs> because it makes because every episode starts with, you know. Yeah. John Smith was just a normal salesman in yeah. Wichita, Kansas, but he had a penchant for torturing and killing. And you're like, like, I'm just worrying about everybody around me being having a a, a torture chamber in their basement. Well, it sounds like my ex-wife. She used to watch Lifetime, <laughs> li Lifetime all the time, and, and she was so paranoid. She said, "This the jogger. I don't want to jog outside because there there was a show where the, the the jogger. She was just minding her own business, and they were kidnapped." I said. Look, I do this for a living. Do you realize how much this actually happens? It right. doesn't happen. But it warps your perception. Yeah, but she, but she would get if so you watch paranoid too, about if it. If you watch too much of that stuff, it happened yeah. to me too. I was, I was becoming, I was becoming a bit paranoid yeah. about that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, when when you get paranoid and get anxiety, we have this thing, uh, Hecka, Hecka. 
It's a CBD CBD boutique. They're one of our sponsors here on the show. Uh, you know anything about CBD oil? I don't. It's a uh, a lot of people are using it now to deal with their anxiety issues. It's, okay, I have anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> well, then we'll, Trust me. We're gonna have, we're gonna have to get you some. You have any samples? Yeah, we do have a sample just for you, actually. And we're gonna yeah, look at this. Watch. I, this was not rehearsed. It's I didn't know this. Funny, was funny you mentioned. Try this. You put you put a put a dropper under your under your tongue. It's totally totally uh, legal. It's uh, not uh, not anything illegal that's going to pop you for any drug tests. A lot of the fighters are using it now because this is hemp ab- extract. Yes, it's an extract. So CBD boutique sells that stuff locally. You want me to do it now? Right, well, you can do it now if you want. Yeah, that's, you, <laughs> let's, let's, funny. We've never tried this one. We've, let's see we gotta, what happens. Are you going to transform into something uh, evil, Master Ken, in front of us if you do this? Who knows? <laughs> a really calm Master Ken. I hope that was as much as I was supposed to take. No, I think you're good. I just kind of guessed. You're actually going to feel pretty good here in a little bit. We'll see. Because uh, it's funny. Because like, again, I said we just made a video making fun of the Tenth Planet guys, and we did a we did a. Uh, um, there is a, a rumor that some of them like to. Uh, well, you know Isaac Valley Flag is happy. involved in that, right? Oh, I know. Yeah. I went, I, okay, I've okay. been rolling yeah, at his, uh, him and Nate Harris's yeah. uh, location <laughs> okay, here, the 10th yeah. Planet Albuquerque. <laughs> yeah. And I know that uh, some of them uh, so, not, partake in I'm the... I'm not uh, mentioning any specific yeah. people, but I have heard some of them partake in, in some... In uh, the other version of that. In, yeah. in uh, loosening up a little bit before yeah. they train, which I have <laughs> never heard of anybody doing, which so, is bizarre to me. So we were just making fun of doing that on the show, and here I'm now I'm doing it in real life. Well, so, so CBD... Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> CBD is actually the uh, it doesn't have the the, the psychotic effect of it. The, it it takes it out it takes out. Oh, good! The, I want the anti-psychotic <laughs> version of yeah, this yeah. Hecka. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> I think. You're, are I, you sure? That, is there? There's not a psychotic well, bottle over there that you get mixed if, up, right? If, <laughs> no, <laughs> they have the exact same labels. Just one I'm says looking, anti-psychotic, and uh, one says psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to get high with this stuff. Um, okay, it'll there, just relax no, me. It's just going to relax you. It's going right. to put your mind at ease. That and, relaxes as a martial me. Just artist, saying, need that. Yeah. Just the just the term anti-psychotic relaxes me. Yeah, <laughs> and even for pets too. <laughs> yeah, they, they actually believe it or not. Yeah, they, I'm going to give they, this they to my strength. dogs and well, see what they do. Well, I don't know if do. you want to give that version to your dogs, but they do. They make have a, a dog version. They do have a dog version. All right. Yes, yeah. CBD boutique locally here in Albuquerque. They just opened up a Westside location. Nice. God bless them. They're getting big, making uh, making good business, uh, just like Hollywood. They're they're expanding and uh, doing real good here in town. And that's uh, great. Yeah, we're happy for them. So awesome. We're happy to partner with them. But you know what? It's been a it's been a great show with you. Thank I you for your having time. me. This is great. Yeah, yeah, time flies. I appreciate this. And, we're uh, we're gonna have to do a clip. We got to do a clip with you soon. Yeah, uh, here at the new gym. Absolutely. I will bring. You got to come in and teach a class. We'll bring Master Ken over yes. here. We'll have him do an Emeridote seminar and show the fighters what's what. And, uh, and we'll and, we'll cross promote it and, and yeah. show it on both our platforms. I but would I think, love. To. I think it'd be huge. I would I, love. I, to. I think it'd be great for both of us. That and, would be great. And let's do that. But yeah, uh, absolutely. Thanks again for coming to the thanks show today, and, and we'll see you uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we've made it very easy for you guys to watch uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Twitch, Periscope, you name it. You can watch us. iPod, iPad, iPhone, i whatever, right, so Apple, Google, like or Google. Google you Google Play. the Google people that like to Google. The uh, you can watch it that way. We're we're just cool like that. So just uh, tune in any way you can and. Uh, We will see you next time. Through these doors walk the greatest fighters in the world.